Hello fans of Moshpit Passion, my name is Kayo, right next to me, the one and only Billy Bio. Hey man. <laughs> the one and only. I'm actually William Daniel Gracie, they the fourth, yeah. and I have a little boy who's number five. Yeah. So I'm not the one and only. Okay. Who's in glory right there. Yeah. Who's in glory. Awesome band. Nice. Um, I saw your Instagram account yes. for this tour, or tour start. Yeah. You visited a German school. Can you tell us a bit about that? Did you teach them hardcore or what? Yes. In America, uh, my son is in kin well, he's not in kindergarten anymore, but it's kindergarten. Yeah. And it, I didn't, uh, when I was a kid, I didn't know that it came from German kinder. Anyways, so yeah, I was in Lunen, mm -hmm. and some friends asked me to speak at the school. And uh, I went and spoke in high school. Mm -hmm. They asked me a bunch of questions about my career, my life, the path I, I was on, the path that I'm on, and the different uh, diversions I've had along my life. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was pretty interesting, a lot of fun. So yeah, we are here today because we got a new record out. And yeah. I want to ask you, yeah, show it to the camera. It's called Feed the Fire. It's on AFM Records, a German label, my favorite record label from Germany. And the record kicks ass. Check it out. So when did you realize that you wanted to do a solo record? Yeah, 1988. Yeah. I was a little kid and I started this band called Biohazard. Mm -hmm. So I think the whole time mm -hmm. I've been a solo artist in a way mm -hmm. because I write music and if I'm in a band, I bring the music to a band. Mm -hmm. um, it, with Biohazard or with Power Flow, Now it's Billy Bio. Mm -hmm. So the difference between Billy, like where the music starts, mm -hmm. isn't doesn't change. Mm -hmm. It's just how I bring it in. Yeah. With Billy Bio, it's just me. I didn't I didn't bring a song to other guys that I'm friends with. Mm -hmm. I did everything myself, played all their instruments, and then I had my friends in Suicidal, like Rod Diaz from Suicidal Tendencies, yeah. play bass. Dan Palmer mm -hmm. from uh, Death by Stereo and Zebrahead. Yeah. He played. Uh, Lee guitar, mm -hmm. and then Simo Perini mm -hmm. from Ten Foot Pole, yep. and he actually played in a band called Buddy Beat Roots. I don't know. I don't know if you know them. They're an old band, but electronic band from Italy. Yep. He played drums, and I have a bunch of different friends that play with me on tour. Yep. It's great. Yep. I'm pretty happy. So, um, if you compare your solo records to Biohazard or Power Flow, when it comes to the developing of the songs, like I mentioned before, um, in the past you brought something to the band. Now you wrote everything on yourself, like on a drum machine, and you give it to the guys and said, hey, that's the rhythm, that's the beat, so please uh, bring the stuff in, or was it like a band and you developed everything together? It's, I think with, uh, <laughs> this sounds really stupid or weird, but with Biohazard and, and Powerflow or with other bands, mm -hmm. I write music and I let them have say. Mm -hmm. I let them, I, their opinion I respect. Feedback. Yeah, but with my solo stuff, It's it's almost like it's just me. Mm -hmm. It's pure Billy, grazie day, Billy mm -hmm. Bio. So it's kind of like uh, it's like a, a painter. Mm -hmm. If you have a painting and you have this vision in your head, you take your paintbrush and mm -hmm. you take your canvas mm -hmm. and you paint with paint mm -hmm. and you paint the picture. You hang it on the wall, and that's the vision that you yeah. have inside of you. Yeah. That's what Billy Bio is. Yeah. An artist doesn't paint the painting and then invite his friends over for a beer I know what you and mean. say hey go ahead change the what colors you want to change yeah I don't like that I like this I love biohazard yeah. I love power flow everything about the way that works yeah but the way Billy bio is for me as an artist mm. it's what I envision in my head mm. it's what I feel in my heart in my soul yeah it's it's me yeah pure and simple 100% so basically you are also more happy about it I love. Oh, yeah. I'm happy about Biohazard yeah. and Power Flow too. Yeah. But it's it's more like um, your own. It's like you know what it's like. It's like it's like creating a baby mm -hmm. by yourself. Yeah. I don't have another wife. Yeah. That I'm sharing the responsibility with. Yeah. And the uh, the glory with. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's a good example, man. Yeah. I want to. Talk but I do have a wife who we made wonderful kids yeah. together. I want to talk about the artwork because um, the how do you say booklet? Yep. I saw. Sold in the camera. I saw you wearing a police suit. 
And usually, you know, punk rock hardcore kids like, oh no, ACAB, all cops are bastard. Of How course. can you do that? <laughs> so for me, it's more like uh, interpretation of chaos and order about the new record. Is yeah. it right? Maybe yeah. you want to tell something about the concept. Also, the video Feed the Fire is also about this riot and chaos and order. Well, uh, that's. I'm glad that you brought that up because yeah. not many people bring that up. They just accept my art for what it is, mm. and. The whole there's a duality to life. Mm -hmm. There's a balance of life. There's a, um, a lot of infighting, mm -hmm. especially in America now, between different groups, mm -hmm. between different cultures. And I've seen it happen my whole life, mm -hmm. but it's the worst it's ever been, especially now with our president. Yeah. Um, the world is divided. Yeah. When it needs to be together and united more. Yeah. So. There's always two sides. There, there's a, a lot of songs that deal with that, but there's a song specifically called Enemy. Yep. Um, it's on the record. But the artwork deals with a lot of the things that, um, that I see are going on in the world. That there's people who, um, like I'm a rule of law guy. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I believe that there has to be law and order. Definitely. But I also believe that I'm against oppression, and I believe in the people who stand up for people who can't stand up for themselves. Mm -hmm. I've always been that person. You have to do that. Yeah. You can't let your voice be pushed down because the people in power, mm -hmm. people with money, they thrive off of that. Mm -hmm. And they like us fighting because mm -hmm. it's easier to control us and it's easier to manipulate the world mm -hmm. and our society mm -hmm. to their advantage when we're busy fighting amongst each other. Yeah. Whether it's left or right yeah. or Republican or Democrat mm -hmm. or Clinton or Trump mm -hmm. or whatever mm -hmm. uh, vegetarian or carnivore mm -hmm. whatever there's so many different issues like I'm a vegetarian mm -hmm. but I don't push it on other people it's my choice yeah. you know I have a lot of friends who are hardcore vegans or mm -hmm. hardcore vegetarians who push it on other people mm -hmm. I have a lot of friends that are carnivores that make fun of me because I don't eat meat mm -hmm. but it's a joke, mm. you know, when they it, it, when they make fun of me. But my point is, I don't want to live in a world yep. where everyone thinks like me, yep. believes in things that I believe in, listens to the same music, mm. because the world would be a boring place. Yep. I like that it's different. I like that the world is filled with people from different cultures mm. that like different things, that have different attitudes, different beliefs. Mm. Um, it makes it, the world a more interesting pick place to live mm -hmm. in my opinion yeah. so the record deals with a lot of those issues mm -hmm. um, and, and the, the whole meaning behind you know me being showing different sides mm -hmm. is that you have to see the different points of mm -hmm. view you can't just look at something as mm -hmm. as as you know as mm -hmm. hardcore yeah. as that's it yeah. it's the only way it can go there's shades of gray mm -hmm. there's so many yeah. different things and you have to be willing to adjust mm -hmm. And to be able to function yeah. in a functioning society, in my opinion. Yeah. Can I take this last point, which you stated for yeah. a moment? Because during the last days, I don't know if you saw it on the internet, there's this um, innocent going on with the kids wearing um, these uh, Make America Great Again hats, and there was this Native American step up to the kids, and the kid was just staying and laughing at him. There's an ongoing uh, discussion about that. And there are also different point of views and different uh, videos showed up. And um, what I don't like about the situation is that the press and the media is also involved. I don't want to call it fake news because it's a Trump word. It's also in Germany a very bad word about uh, the, the Nazi time here and in the world. But I want to, to say is the media, they're also against Trump, but they are also manipulating it in a way where the right wing say, ha, look, what did we say? Uh, all media, they are fake. And for me, it's like, no, it can't be true. I see it also as somehow fake, but I have something in common with those people, you know? You know, it's another word for f fake news mm. is propaganda. Mm. And there's always propaganda. The, the, all politicians they, and all the all political movements have propaganda mm. to benefit their, their um, agenda, yeah. right? But one thing I learned when I was a kid, one of the many things I learned as a kid, but I remember learning this phrase in but one of my teachers explained to me that the further you go mm. left, the further you become right. Mm. And the further right you go, the further you become... So the more extreme you get, the more you become yeah. what you're fighting against. Definitely. And, and at the time, I kind of understood it. Mm. But in the, New York, in the scene in New York, in the underground music scene, in the hardcore punk rock scene in New York, I saw 
as a young kid, mm -hmm. how if you if you weren't wearing the right clothes mm -hmm. or the right color yeah. laces in your Doc Martens, or you weren't wearing Doc Martens, you yeah. were wearing combat boots, people judged you. Definitely. And it became like for a scene that was about accepting everybody. Yeah. It became what we are against, yeah. and I saw a lot of that shit, mm -hmm. and I've seen it happen more and more in the underground scene, yeah. which is a scene that we all feel a part of mm -hmm. because we all kind of feel like, at least for me, mm -hmm. I always felt like I didn't belong anywhere yeah. until I met other people who felt like they didn't belong anywhere, yeah. and then we realized we belong together, yeah. and it, it was the hardcore it's, scene, yeah. or the punk rock scene, but the, un the underground subculture of the world. Mm -hmm. Is a place that we all feel um, at home. Mm -hmm. So I don't like how the infighting is, especially within our subculture. Yeah. But in the world as a whole, mm -hmm. it's all there. It's yellow journalism. Mm -hmm. Biohazard wrote songs about it. I write songs yeah. about it. It happens all the time. Yeah. And it, the, the goal, and I think it trickles down because it's the editors, maybe they have their agenda, mm -hmm. but the people who own the papers, they have their agenda, and when they pay an editor out of, of a magazine yeah. or a newspaper or or the writer for a news channel, yeah. they have their agenda, and they can say, "I want you to push more for this. Yeah. I want you to push more for that." Yeah. And that is propaganda. Definitely, it happened with the all the fucking time. Nazis in Germany, did it. yeah, yeah. So, I think the great what I see about. Um, my German friends is that you are more more wise to it mm. because of the history where Americans are more blind to it mm. I think as much as I love my country and I love my American friends we're mostly majority of Americans are more blind to mm. it they don't see it yeah. so they see and I think that's why you see a kid wearing a tr make, make America, America great, great again, again hat and standing mm. up in a Native American yeah. to me it's no matter what it is mm. it comes down to respect and the lack of respect mm. You have to have respect for people, mm -hmm. for cultures, for beliefs. And if you can respect people and respect someone's beliefs, if mm -hmm. it's different, yep. show respect and discuss it. Talk about it. Definitely. Don't be disrespectful. And that yeah. shit's disrespectful. You have to talk about it. Yeah. Definitely. So, Like you mentioned before, you met all kind of people from the left side to the right side. There's also a line into well, Field of the I've, Fire. I fought a lot of people on the right side. And I I've bit hands. I've swung fists. <laughs> Many times. But do we have a story which you want to share where you thought, damn, we come not together, we have done the same vision, but I stand you somehow of your thinking? Um, many stories, uh, but one story popped out. I remember we were on, it was actually sick of it all, mm -hmm. but we were on tour with sick of it all, and we played this place in Pennsylvania, um, it was called Allentown, Pennsylvania. And I remember we had a friend of ours, Chris, on tour with us. He was like t helping us roadie and, mm -hmm. and stuff. And he was stage diving, and he came back on stage, and all these fucking, all these like right wing skinheads. Th th it was like maybe a thousand kids there, mm -hmm. but maybe five kids like these right wing mm -hmm. skinheads, white power dudes. They roughed him up. Mm -hmm. He comes up, he goes, "These white power dudes," and I'm like, "Yo, who?" And he goes, those fucking guys. And we're, this is while between songs while we're on stage. And I look in the crowd, and there's like all these kids, mm -hmm. and they're like doing Sikh Kyle. And we're like, what the fuck? Uh. So half the bowers, we're, half of us are Jewish. Mm -hmm. we were, and we spoke out against racism, mm -hmm. and we went on the mic, we said something about it. And we're like, this is a place where it's a free world. Mm -hmm. Have your belief, but don't push it in all the people's yep. faces. And we told the kids, if you have your belief, fine. If you, we don't stand for this shit, leave mm. if you don't like what we sing about. Yeah. But if you're going to be here, respect others, yeah. right? And the kids kept doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, and it got crazier and crazier, mm -hmm. so I jumped off stage, and I'm playing. I jump off stage between the barricade, and mm -hmm. you're the barricade, I'm here. Yeah. And the kids run to me, and they're trying to fucking, and they're doing Sikh Kyle in my face. And there's only, yeah. there's only made five of them, right? Yeah. Like, out of a thousand people, that's a lot of, it feels like a lot of people. Yeah. So the kid's putting his hands in my face yeah. like this. So I bit his fucking yeah. hand. And I'm like playing guitar, so spit his hand, his hand out. And the kids wanted to kill me. I'm like, come on, motherfuckers. So that was it. We yeah. finished the show. At the end of the night, we're backstage. And the, the, the dressing room was located upstairs behind the, the stage. And we're talking, hanging out with some friends. And the security guard comes up and he said, hey, there's this kid who wants to talk to you. I said, oh, yeah, who, who wants to talk to me? He goes, he's downstairs. So I walk downstairs. I see the, I see the kid. 
He's at the bottom of the stairs, and it's the kid who I bit. And he said, hey, can I talk to you? I said, yeah, come upstairs. He comes up the stairs, and he goes, I said, you got a problem? And he goes, no, I just want to apologize. And he, he comes upstairs. I said, okay, come on in the room. He comes in the room, and my friend Chris, yeah. who was there, he goes, I, I want to apologize to your friend Chris mm -hmm. and, and you, Billy. I, we love biohazard. I'm like, I don't, I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> if you have your views yeah, yeah. and you, you know, don't, we don't want your, you know, mm -hmm. we're not interested in your fan, you, you liking our shit. But anyways, mm -hmm. he goes, I want to friend, I want to apologize to your friend Chris, yeah. and, or to your friend. So he apologized. He yeah. goes and he said, we don't have a problem with black people. Yeah. And I'm like, that sounds <laughs> weird. When you say yeah. that, you have a problem. Yeah. You shouldn't, ha you know what I mean? So he goes, it's not the blacks that we have problems with. We have a problem with the Jews. Mm. I said. <laughs> Oh, you do, huh? And he goes, and so Evan's there and Danny. I said, hey, Ev. And, and the kid, I said, say it again. He goes, I, we don't have a problem with black people. We have a problem with Jews. And oh, Evan goes, oh, oh. you got a problem with Jews. He goes, I'm a Jew. He goes, you got a problem. And then you got a problem with me. And then the kid said, no, 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 no. I, I don't have a problem with all the Jewish people, just the people who own the banks. Oh. So the kid, he kept changing his yeah. story. And so I talked to the kid and I said, what's your problem? First, you said you have, pro you, have you, beat, you have a problem with my friend because he's black. Then you have a problem with Jewish people. Mm -hmm. Then when you find out the band is Jewish, mm -hmm. you have a problem. With, you don't have a problem with Jewish people, just the Jewish people who own banks. Yeah. You keep changing your story. He goes, "Listen, man, my father, he does. He's racist. Mm -hmm. He doesn't like people. He doesn't like black people. Doesn't like Jewish people. That's how I was raised." Mm -hmm. I said, "But that's your father's problem. Yeah. That's not your problem." If you're smart enough and you're, you have the balls to come and talk to us, you have the balls to stand up and make your own mind up. Yeah. Not what your father yeah. thinks. And a lot of that stuff is yeah. passed down from generations. Yeah, and, definitely. And the, the, the smarter, I think the people who are a little bit more intelligent, they break that cycle. Yeah. And the modern generation, like the new kids, I have a song on the new record called Generation Z. Mm -hmm. I love the new generation. A lot of people say, why do you like the new generation? They protest against everything. Mm. Fucking great. If you don't like something, you have to stand, stand up, up and say yeah. you don't like it. If you don't, the people above you will push you down. Yes. The new generation is a great generation, yeah. and I'm proud of it. I, that's what that song's about. Yeah. Nice, man. So, Small little story for you. <laughs> um, I want to ask, um, there are some interludes on the new record, like, um, oh, sorry, I have to look at that. It's a remedy, the interlude, and the beginning of uh, untruth. Do you think maybe in the past also do an experimental record with this electronic beat kind of thing to do that? Yeah. Or would the yeah. people say, dude, you're punk hardcore, what are you doing here? I've always believed that being punk and hardcore is not giving a fuck mm. what anyone else thinks. And I think that I still believe that. Mm. So I don't care. On the first Biohazard record, mm -hmm. the second Biohazard record, the third Biohazard record, I played piano. I did strings. Mm -hmm. And people said, Wait, you can't play piano. It's a hardcore record. I'm like, oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. Fuck you. That's what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And I did it. And I do it. So I don't care. Mm -hmm. And I've done electronic records. Yeah. I did remix records. Mm -hmm. I did stuff with uh, Onyx, mm -hmm. House of Pain. I love, I'm not a, I, I love punk rock and hardcore. Yeah. It's my heart and soul. But I have other things that I like too. Definitely. So I made all those songs, all mm. those interludes, it's yeah. all me. It, will there be something like that in the future? Yeah. There already was, I did yeah. something, maybe I'll release it, maybe not, but I love mm. the energy of what I do with Billy Bio. Yeah. Feed the Fire for me is the first of many records. Yeah. I have the next one I've already, I'm working on now. Yeah. So there'll be more and yeah. we'll see. So nice. I see, unfortunately, our time is running out. I got two questions left. The first one is, what is the current status of Biohazard and Powerflow? Okay, so uh, Powerflow, we're working on the... I just, I just got a text from the guys earlier. Yeah. And we're, we're planning, we're working on the new record right now. Yeah. New Powerflow, it'll be out in 2019. Yeah, nice. Biohazard, I talk to Bobby and, and Danny all the time. I just played with Danny a couple weeks ago with Sick of It All and Life of Agony. Um, There's still Biohazard. Yeah. It's a different type of band. Mm. Powerflow in Billy Bio is a little bit more organized, mm. um, but Biohazard is more like a vibe mm. thing. Like when we all just, when everything like the planets, when everything aligns, yep. we do something. Yep. And until then, who knows? Okay. But we're not over. 
We yeah. talk all the time. We, we write music together. We share things. Yeah. When it's right, it's You'll right. Together. And there'll be a new Biohazard record. Nice. So yeah, my last question is, our magazine is called Mosh Pit Passion. And do you have a um, story of your own when you went into a mosh pit when you were young, which you want to share? Yeah, I still go in the mosh pit. Um, I, I, uh, so many stories, bro. I like the, uh, um, I came from a, an era where the mosh pit was very violent and very crazy, where people would, they take razor blades and they swipe them oh. in, this, in the pit. Uh -huh. I saw guns be pulled out in the pit. Um, crazy shit. Yeah. And the, the, the scene came more together mm -hmm. and more, it's more about a brotherhood now and sisterhood that I, I love. Mm -hmm. I love how I see more women in the mm -hmm. pit now. I love how people help each other more. Mm -hmm. And that's fucking great. Yeah. So I've, I've seen a lot of crazy shit. Mm -hmm. And to see the brotherhood and sisterhood and the family vibe now mm -hmm. is great. And yeah. I love being a part of it. So nice, Billy. Thank you very much for the time into the interview. Thank you. Maybe you have some last kind words you want to share. You yes. can do it now. Keep up with me. I'm a different type of musician, a different type of band. Billy Biohazard over all social media. I answer your stuff. You got a question, ask me personally. I will answer it. There's no management. There's no cousin who does it. It's all me. It's from me to you. I appreciate your support. Dankeschön für die Unterstützung. Ich Thank you very much, man. Freunde, ich hoffe, euch hat das Interview gefallen. Damit ihr keine Videos verpasst, abonniert unseren Channel. Auf unserem Kanal findet ihr noch weitere interessante Interviews mit namhaften Bands. Schaut euch auch auf unserer Facebook-Seite herum, wo wir exklusiven Content wie interessante Beiträge, Konzertfotos oder Videos uploaden. Auf unserer Webseite www.moshpitpassion.de findet ihr CD-Reviews, Konzertfotos, Konzertberichte, Interviews und viele, vieles mehr.